All right, and then the last kind of criticism here uh, that they level is uh, that um, the classical approach uh, does not address the personal dimension of knowledge and belief. They tell us that classical apologists are concerned as a practical matter to persuade non-Christians to believe in Christ as it as this evidence in their emphasis on finding common ground with unbelievers. But on the other hand, common ground for classical apologists is typically understood as rational or intellectual, right? That's the common ground. We have a uh, common rational facility, or faculties rather, or intellectual faculties, or reason is the common ground. And so this focus, focus, they tell us, is widely perceived as a weakness in the classical approach because it overlooks the personal, non-rational factors that contribute to a person's uh, knowledge and belief. Commitment to ultimate philosophical perspectives, they tell us, is not merely intellectual. It is also influenced by our feelings, our emotions, and uh, you know the decisions of our will, volitional factors. And so it's more than just you know the head is what the, they're suggesting here. And so the, the the criticism here is that the classical approach does not address the personal dimensions of knowledge and belief uh, with this focus on the rational and the intellectual. Mm-hmm. Uh, Len Nimoy titled one of his first books that he wrote, I am not Spock, but he could have titled it. We are all not Spock. Uh, <laughs> e- e- even, even those of us who, who really like Spock, uh, we, we can't break free from our, our, our emotional and volitional factors here. And so, uh, you know, no matter how, how hard we try to always be rational, sometimes there's, there's that one, there's one, that one news story that just, uh, gets you up hot under the collar and, and you start ranting and raving or, or you see the, 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 your favorite sports ball team uh win or lose and you know you don't take a, a, a rational uh look at it and uh th- throw it through modus ponum and 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 come out the other side and go why well, yes the, the the lions of course are uh inevitably going to lose every single game for the next uh, thousand years so uh, it, it's inevitable <laughs> <laughs> well, we should re- repeat the points that the potential weaknesses in the classical approach are not criticisms of all classical apologists, our authors say. And that is true because, uh, you know, th- th- uh, we-, we talked about even uh, when we looked at the people and even Norman Geisler, who uh, kind of uh, um, is, is, is the epitome of all classical apologists, according to our authors, um, pr- probably doesn't hold to every single point perfectly. And so... Um, uh, there are people that still identify with classical apologists, but may not hold to every single criticism here. Most of the accomplished apologists in this tradition uh, nuance their approach to overcome or at least ameliorate some of all or all of these difficulties. Um, uh, you know, sometimes uh, that, that, that's a hard thing to do. And sometimes uh, people in the camp want to kick you out of the camp and then no one else will take you. So you create your own thing or you, you know, you call it, uh, it's, it's, you just call it new. Uh, it, it's the, and uh, any, you know, the, 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 the new, new version of Calvinism is the new version <laughs> of classical apologists. And so,